so I called this Rethink Your Uplink because it rhymes and I thought it would help me win votes. <laughs> and uh, it was originally a 10 talk, so now I got 20 minutes worth of votes. Uh, but really, it probably should be something more like think about your uplink at all, because uh, for the most part, we take that for granted. Uh, so I'm going to go a little bit deeper into something that Wes talked about earlier today, 6 gigahertz uplink performance, uh, particularly with, with indoor clients. So the way we design in 2.4 and 5 gigahertz is, you know, heavy focus on downlink. What's the RSSI at the client? And we measure that with site surveys, and we go and, and we do RF modeling, and, and, and then we assume on the uplink everything will work. And for the most part, it does. There are only a few use cases where we really do look at both sides, like point-to-point -point links, for example. Um, and that's worked out. And if you saw my talk last year at WLPC, part of the reason is the receive sensitivity of modern APs is ridiculous. Like, it's really impressive. So even with a marginal signal, sometimes APs can, can make it work. Um, but things are different in six gigahertz, right? So I just got an iPhone 15 Pro, and I've got a Wi-Fi 6E network at home, and I'm running this shortcut um, uh, to look at my connectivity. Uh, and just, wow, six gigahertz, pretty cool. I'm like this guy, pretty awesome. I love to see, see these enormous uh, data rates with 160 megahertz wide channels. Uh, and most of the time, it looks like this. Right? I've got a screaming fast downlink, and the uplink's pretty good. It's not great, but um, that data rate is a 64 qualm data rate, probably MCS um, 5, 6, or 7. So perfectly fine, not going to cause any problems. But what I've seen is as I start to get further away from my APs, um, the uplink degrades a little bit faster than the downlink. And so here, uh, it might be hard to read that, but these are, um, uh, this is with RSSI minus 67 and minus 65. The uplink, the transmit data rate from my phone had gone all the way down to MCS1 and, and 2 uh, on these two samples using QPSK, right? Really old modulation used when Channel conditions really need something really robust. Um, so I started looking into why, you know, why this could be and, and what some of the reasons are. Um, you've seen this, um, this client classification before for six gigahertz clients in the US. I think there's really three classes that are important. Um, the most important right now is, is indoor clients um, because that's, either how everything classified or how it's operating, if it's a dual client connected to uh, an LPI AP. And there's a couple things going on here, but <clears throat> the transmit power limitations are the most interesting thing here. So with wide channels, 80 megahertz wide, 160 megahertz wide, um, a client can transmit at 18 dBm or 21 dBm EIRP. Um, so why, you know, why is my iPhone having problems? Well, part of it might be that the management and control traffic, despite using a wide channel, always only uses 20 megahertz. So that traffic at a max can be transmitted at 12 dBm, no matter what the channel width is. So that might be caught, you know, part of the issue. That's you know, 16 milliwatts, not a lot of power. Um, just quickly, dual clients, this is what we want to have because these are the clients that can connect to standard power. When they're connected to standard power APs, um, there's a good chance they won't have the same link asymmetry um, that we see with LPI APs every once in a while. Um, that's because they 
<coughs> are allowed to transmit up to 30 dBm. So basically, the, the AP gets uh, authorized uh, a transmit power from the AFC, and uh, a dual client can transmit 6 dB below that authorized power. Um, so um, that can effectively mean not much of a limit at all. Fixed clients, these are like remote APs for point-to-point -point links. So these can transmit at 36 dBm across all channel widths. And, uh, but there are some challenges here. These need their own AFC spectrum grant, uh, independent of like that root AP's uh, spectrum authorization. So if you think about that for point to point, both have to kind of figure out what channel they can both use at a transmit power they, they can both use and both need to interact with the AFC. So if you have a remote AP um, that has, uh, that's using its link for internet connectivity, um, if that link goes down and it loses its spectrum authorization, um, somehow it needs to communicate with the AFC out of band. And then this is something that's in the works in the US, it's being proposed, very low power. Um, this is for hotspots or high speed um, connectivity to, um, to local accessories. Um, so these rules are not set in, set in stone, but this is what's being proposed. And what I like most about this is in 20 megahertz, these clients and APs can only transmit up to 8 dBm. So if you have, a, if you have trouble with hotspots causing CCI, in 6 gigahertz, it won't quite be as bad. Although they'll probably use 320 megahertz channel widths. <laughs> so I went uh, uh, talking to the MIST team and, and, and looking at data, and, and we did some work to, uh, you know, look more across our U.S. customer base of, and uh, the 6 gigahertz um, performance data that, that we have there um, to see, you know, is this bigger than just me and my iPhone? And if we look at uplink RSSI in the 5 gigahertz band, this kind of tells us what we've been doing pretty much works, right? Average around minus 55 dBm and kind of normal distribution slopes on both sides. So if we, if we add the six gigahertz data, this is again from real networks in the US, the uplink RSSI is a lot lower on average, uh, about 10 dBm lower. So uh, you know, that's something we're gonna have to account for in our designs where six gigahertz is really um, mission critical. So then if we look at um, data rates on the uplink and downlink, uh, if we want to measure link rate um, asymmetry, one way to do that is to, to take the downlink data rate and just subtract the uplink data rate. And if there's a positive number, that means the downlink is better than the uplink. Uh, if it's zero, it's perfectly symmetrical. So we looked at that and compared it at different uplink RSSI values. And in six gigahertz, there's usually you know, a, a positive number, a, a better downlink. Um, uh, even you know, as, as RSSI degrades, still somewhere you know, up to 100 megabits per second, uh, where uh, you know, the starting data rate on the downlink is pretty low. Um, so that's fairly interesting. Doing some more uh, in-depth packet captures with clients. So this is a six gigahertz tablet. And um, you know, one thing that jumped out is when you look at the uh, uplink RSSI of data frames versus management control and null data packets, when we're close to the AP, it's, it's pretty even. But when we get a little bit further away, um, you start to see a, a gap, maybe 6 dB opening up. 
Maybe that's because the data frames can be transmitted at higher power, um, or maybe there's other reasons for that. Um, but that's you know something to think about when you think about clients, you know, particularly sticky clients as they get further away. Um, their their management control traffic is going to be received a lot lower. So, you know, what are some of the consequences here? Um, I think, you know, at the cell edge with six gigahertz and indoor clients is where these issues can appear. Um, there could be roaming issues. Uh, you can imagine a scenario where a, a client that has some uplink awareness gets to the cell edge and then jumps to five gigahertz before roaming to the five gigahertz radio of the next AP and then going up to six gigahertz. Now, I've never seen that happen. It doesn't seem like clients are, uh, are programmed to do that. It seems like they still have all their focus on the downlink and uplink isn't a big component or any component of their roaming algorithm. Um, but you could definitely imagine a scenario where a sticky client in six gigahertz just kind of falls off a cliff pretty fast uh, because it can't transmit loud enough and get a, enough uh, SNR at the AP. Um, you know, real-time apps, Teams and Zoom, um, those could have issues if they're in an area where uplink performance isn't great. And you know there may be other consequences from uh, that difference in in uh, 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 receive um, RSSI for the uh, different frame types. So particularly where voice and video are concerned, you know that's something to look at. Six gigahertz video cameras, if those exist, um, are, are are another use case for that um, needs to be looked at. So a couple design tips with six gigahertz. I think it's useful if you have mission critical six gigahertz uh, devices out there to model the uplink coverage, not just the downlink. And you know, part of you know another way to reframe that is just measuring the six gigahertz beacon RSSI doesn't tell us everything we we really want to know and validate about performance on that network. Um, you know, something that helps is more spatial streams on the AP. That increases its receive sensitivity and can pull some of those lower power signals out of the air a little bit better. And, you know, I've been thinking about how can we validate this, right? We go do a validation survey, a normal one, doesn't tell us really anything about uplink. So, if, if again, if it's a mission critical six gigahertz network, Take some of those important clients out to those areas where the signal might be a little marginal and see how they're doing on the uplink. Um, I also want to shout out Hamina. Um, they've done some cool stuff uh, with uplink modeling. So here's a, a site I've done, real simple site. This, and this is the six gigahertz um, coverage the downlink model in Hamana, and the existing design is for five gigahertz. So there's always a question, can we reuse it for six gigahertz or not? Of course, the answer is it depends. <laughs> but one of the things that Hamana does is it lets you flip over um, the model and pick a client out and see what the uplink coverage looks like for that client. So here's an example where, in this conference room, the uplink performance is starting to get a little marginal. That's where I wanted to have the highest MCS rates available because that's where, um, you know, a, a lot of activities can happen. So a lot of assumptions go into this kind of modeling, and it, this is something that again needs on-site validation to, to see if, yeah, actually there's a problem here or not. Uh, but it's something to think about. Um, and I don't know that that's the final word in six gigahertz uplink performance. There's, a, there's certainly a lot more clients coming than we have today. So um, whatever you guys learn about it, please share. And uh, another shout out to cycling here in Phoenix. Just 
Yep, Troy and Mark and I have been out riding in the morning, so if anybody, anybody wants to join us, please do. Look us up on Slack. And thank you.